Alan Hirsch Advisors, creating aha moments, presents Aha Business Podcasts. We provide opportunities to discover information to help you run your business and guide your decision making. The more you know, the better decisions you make. For more information, log on to alanhirschadvisors.com. I'm your host, Alan Hirsch. Uh, welcome to tonight's podcast. Uh, my guest tonight is Jorge Castro. He's uh, with Discover Me, a web service for small businesses. Welcome to the show, Jorge. Thank you so much for Alan having me. It's great to be here. So what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? You know, it's really about bringing um, access uh, and opportunity to small businesses really everywhere. Uh, what's, that's what inspired me to begin Discover Me, seeing how many small businesses out there uh, just didn't have their own website. Um, you know, we're not on social media. We're not really taking advantage of the opportunities out there to, to grow and realize that there were a few different kind of barriers that small business folks were facing, not the least of which was the thought of paying four, five, six thousand dollars or more for even the most simplest websites, which of course many small businesses can't afford to do. <laughs> so it's really the, the ability to bring this access and this opportunity um, to be able to grow and expand uh, you know, for small businesses that have been previously kind of shut out of these opportunities, being able to bring these opportunities to these small businesses is, uh, is really what, what lights me up. And uh, that's really what gets me up in the morning. So, you know, how'd you get started? What, uh, where do you come from to get into the uh, uh, web services for small businesses? Well, I tell you, my previous career uh, was actually in, in hospitality. Um, I when I was in college, I did my undergrad at uh, Trinity College uh, here in Hartford, Connecticut. And as a college job, I decided to become a bartender. Figured it was a great way to earn some extra money on the side, have some fun, working mostly on the weekends, wouldn't interfere with school. And uh, kind of lo and behold, I ended up falling in love with the hospitality business. Um, ended up doing that for over 20 years. Uh, I'm actually a, a graduate of the Johnson & Wales University of culinary school. Um, so I've run uh, bars, restaurants, nightclubs. Uh, I own my own bar and restaurant uh, for almost five years um, previously. So uh, it was really over the last few years, I found myself craving a new challenge. Uh, not necessarily burned out. I've always loved and still do love hospitality, but I wanted to try something different. I decided to go back for my MBA and as I was, after I finished that, I uh, went to that at the University of Hartford here, again, also in Hartford, Connecticut. And when I was done, I uh, had a hard time kind of latching on with, in, uh, you know, sort of in corporate America in the, uh, in the field I had concentrated in. And as time went by, it was just, you know, it was kind of, all right, well, if, uh, if nobody out there can find a use for me, <laughs> I'm going to have to make myself useful somehow. Right. So... I started noticing how so many little mom and pop, you know, uh, restaurants and other businesses just wouldn't have a website. You know, I was completely kind of shocked by that. And, you know, and I'm sure you know this from, you know, anywhere you've ever traveled or anywhere any one of your listeners would live. The best food you ever find in a town is typically is never going to be at a chain place or the touristy place often not even at the fancy places. It's at those little hole in the wall, you're, you're mom and pop. You're absolutely right. That they're, they're family owned, family run. Grandma might be cooking in the kitchen. And you, Half you, the you staff know, is family. Italy, you find it all over the place. It's, uh, you, know, you just don't go to the, the tourist traps. It's, uh, uh, you try to find your own, your, your own uh, way in, in some of these restaurants. And yes, it's the best food around. Exactly. And what I what I kept discovering was that I could never find their menus. Me being, you know, one way or another, for one reason or another, kind of constantly on the go, I order a lot of takeout. I order a lot of to-go. And certainly now during the pandemic, obviously everyone's ordering a lot more, you know, a lot more takeout, ordering a lot more to-go. And I would find that, you know, having lived in and around Hartford for so long, I know where all the little spots are in Hartford, but I could never find their menus online. None of these places ever had websites. And I'm saying to my, at first I dismissed the idea. I said, ah, 
I didn't think it was a viable business idea. I said, there, there can't be that many businesses in 2017, 18, 19 that don't have their own website anymore. Could there be? But the more I kept looking into it, kept nagging me in the back of my mind, I kept seeing, man, this is a huge problem. And I've seen estimates upwards of 40% of all small businesses across America don't even have their own website. I was completely shocked by that. I didn't even believe it at first. I had to keep looking around and sure enough, kept seeing numbers cited consistently between 30 and 40%. And as I researched it more, the reason really was what I had mentioned a little while ago was that small businesses are essentially being faced with three choices when it comes to their websites. You know, so Google search someone out there to pay five grand or more to do it yourself, which I always tell people, I don't care what Oscar the Crouch tells you on TV. <laughs> it's not that simple. You know, it doesn't work that way where you take a picture, a couple keystrokes. Hey, Absolutely. my website's live. My business is famous. I, no, it doesn't work that way, you know, or just go without, which is what so many businesses have been forced, you know, have been forced to do. So I said, how could I, you know, make the, make these essential professional services available to these folks that are, you know, that are just so often the first ones left behind when it comes to access, opportunity, uh, you know, resources. And that's really what kind of got the idea going, got the juices going. And I said, boy, you know, it's a, it's always, it's, it's a neat little anecdote. You always feel so proud when you know the little spot in the town, you know, when you, oh, I know the spot to go eat. It's this little place. But why should they have to be hidden? They are these wonderful little hidden culinary gems, these beautiful treasures in every town. Why should they be neighborhood secrets? Why shouldn't they have the access and the opportunity to these services that instead of, now most of you know, these folks don't get into the business to become McDonald's or to become Subway and have a million locations. Mm -hmm. But if suddenly they got known outside the neighborhood and are now finding, you know, lines outside their door every day on a Monday or Tuesday, now they're thinking, hey, maybe I can, I can expand. I can grow. I can open another location. I can hire more people. I can do more. I can do more things. So it's another lifeline that provides, again, access and opportunity in our communities across the board that are so often the first ones left behind. Well, there are so many of them are left behind in, in, in this, for, for, in the pandemic. Uh, restaurants that aren't online, they're, they're closing left and right because they have no business. They have limited resources. They have limited customers who don't know where to find their menu. Uh, and uh, uh, they, they are literally going out of business. They've got to find a way to build a website, at least with a menu. And if they're a neighborhood place, uh, uh, with someone with a uh, uh, e-commerce site, being able to uh, have the customers come on and bill, uh, order it themselves. I, I did a, uh, a mail order with a local restaurant here that has a terrible website in, in where I live. And the, the three times I ordered, they got them all. One, they didn't get the credit card number right. Once they got the sandwich wrong. Uh, and there's no, if you make a mistake on a online uh, system, it's your fault. <laughs> yep. If you exactly. if they make a mistake when there's no system, it's, it's their fault. You could have said the wrong thing, but you thought you said the right thing. So you, you, you know, you've got to be able to, uh, uh, particularly in this day and age with the pandemic, which looks like it could be going another six months, a year. Uh, if they want to survive, they need websites. So yeah, what I makes you so special in working with these, uh, uh, small businesses? Well, what we're able to do, what really, uh, there's three things that differentiate us from any other local digital marketer you're going to find out there. One is our unmatched technical expertise. My partner, Kasim Omari, is actually a senior level software engineer. He's a lead developer with a Fortune 100 company. So he has a much, he's our technology director as well as my partner he has a much higher level of technical expertise than you're gonna find in, you know, in the average firm in town. 
So which is gonna lead us to be able to do a lot of exciting things in the future. Um, we've already got some things kind of on the drawing board, um, you know, sort of coming up next that will be able to help uh, small businesses and, you know, and to help many others. So that's one thing that separates us. The second thing is what is our unrivaled personal service featuring what we call our continuity of care pledge, meaning the old days of, you know, a transactional purchase of someone to do your website, you know, here's five grand, here's your website, good luck to you. Well, as we all know, the way the algorithms work, uh, the way modern SEO works, a static website is just not gonna cut it anymore. 10 years ago, you might've been able to get away with, you know, like a, hanging up a painting, putting up your information on a web page, and okay, this is, you know, this is all I need. Yeah. It's not so, you know, the, the links have to work. The SEO has to be there or no one's gonna, you know, or no one's gonna find you, um, but we're there for you. What the, our websites that we can set up for as little as $500 all come with S, custom SEO built in. They include a year's worth of all of the background software, service support, maintenance, the plugins, the hosting, the security, all of that stuff we take care of. Our clients can call us anytime they need us if they're having a trouble with something, if they don't understand something, if they need to find additional services, if they need to say, listen, we want this to, you know, we need, uh, we need to get more reviews. We need to kind of goose our reviews to help our SEO. You know, can you help us? How do we, you know, sort of cultivate, you know, sort of more reviews? Oh, no problem. Here's what we can do. Here's what we can do for you there. So with our continuity of care, we are always there. Our clients can call us, you know, sort of anytime they need us. And third is our unheard of affordability and value. For everything we provide, to be able to set a business up for five, as little as $500 and our three primary, uh, sort of our three basic introductory packages range from 500 to 15. So for example, on the high end, the $1,500 package will include online ordering, which as you said is, you know, can be a great rule for business. I always tell folks, beautiful thing about online ordering is you are paid before the ticket even comes up in your kitchen. Correct. You are already paid. You don't know labor of somebody having to answer the phone, somebody having to take an in-person order. So, you know, the online ordering and the social media management, which in terms of providing max value for men dollar, well, you can't be free. You can't be, you know, being able to sign up on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, all these places, you know, for free. Let's, let's, let's and be take able a break to break here. So when we come back, sure. we can continue on the social media and uh, talk more about uh, uh, the services you provide. Uh, okay. Uh, and we do have a couple commercials. And when we come back, we'll uh, continue this conversation with Jorge Castro of Discover Me Web Services for Small Business. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, and this is AHA Business Podcast. Hi, Rick Dempsey here. As a former Oriole and Series MVP, I know a lot about winning and championship teams. Today, I'm happy to tell you about my award-winning web design and internet marketing team, Adventure Web Interactive. For over two decades, many of Maryland's most successful firms have chosen Adventure Web as their strategic partner for web design and online marketing. I can tell you from using them personally, their search engine optimization and social media programs have saved their clients tens of thousands over the traditional pay-per-click digital agency. Visit AdventureWebInteractive.com and listen to what clients such as Hercules Fence, TriStar Electric, ABC Rental, Rhine Landscaping, Markdown's Office Furniture, and many more highly successful firms have to say. And don't forget to tell them Rick Dempsey sent you. Strengthen, protect, and preserve your retirement nest egg. Scott Garceau here for the Stephen J. Sless Group, Baltimore's reverse mortgage specialist. Reverse mortgages have evolved to become a viable retirement tool. Enjoy retirement without monthly mortgage payments, improve cash flow, pay off debt, and stretch retirement savings. Stephen and his team can offer strategies to make housing wealth work for you. If you're 62 or older, learn if a reverse mortgage could help. Visit reversebaltimore.com. An equal housing opportunity lender. This is not a commitment to last Stephen J. Sless, NMLS 298581. PRMI, NMLS 3094. Uh, welcome back to the show with me this evening uh, uh, on this podcast is Jorge Castro of Discover Me, uh, web services for small businesses. So 
you were talking about the services that you pipe from $500 to $1,500 for small businesses. And you got into some of the social media. So let's continue from that point. Uh, what do you provide for the, you know, the $500, the $1,500 uh, services? Certainly. Well, through the pandemic, we, like everyone else, were forced to sort of re-strategize. We kind of hunkered down and said, okay, what's going on? What's happening? What's, you know, what's going to happen? Um, you know, sort of where is this going to end up? And as we sort of reassessed, we realized that there are really three key facets of really basic, you know, sort of digital marketing 101, you know, for small businesses that they can afford. One is the website. You know, you have a business, you, you have to have a website nowadays. Two is the online ordering, which, as I said, saves time, saves labor. You're immediately paid. It's a great you know, it's a great way for restaurants to not be completely at the mercy of the delivery services, although delivery is a slightly different issue, um, but it's a great thing for them to be able to have that's not expensive. And then the social media, as I mentioned, being able to sign up for these sites for free, to be able to begin cultivating your audience, your clientele, reaching out to your regulars, letting everyone know you're out there. So those are the three things that we said, you know, this is how we can provide max value for min dollar, you know, to these, uh, you know, to these small businesses. So as I said, for even our highest initial package for the 1500, uh, we include the online ordering, the website, the year's worth of everything, uh, plus social media management tailored to the individual business. So for example, some, some small businesses might be more geared towards Instagram. Uh, and Pinterest, for example, might be a little more visual. Right. Um, some businesses might skew a little older, uh, you know, sort of in their clientele. So they might lean more towards Facebook. Um, if they do a lot of corporate cater, if they do a lot of catering, for example, then they would want to be on LinkedIn. So we really tailor, um, you know, sort of our services to the client's individual needs. So it's, it's about bringing these professional services and making them available to folks that have not had the access before that don't know what a lot of these terms mean, you know, because I, you know, I, I look at a lot of these terms and I get dizzy in terms of <laughs> click this or pay for that, or right. this is a funnel or digital this. And there's so many terms where the average small business person out there is like, I know website, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I know Facebook, you know, I have an email address. I, beyond that, you yeah, know, this, this uh, I don't know much. Me, this reminds me of one of my clients that had a, for four years, had a shop at the BWI airport that did very well. Uh, it was a, a new client uh, this year and she hit the pandemic. The airport shops were closed. What was she gonna do for revenue? But she's been collecting the emails from all the visitors and it's a transient community. No one necessarily lives in the Baltimore metropolitan area or Washington area. And right. she had 4,000, 5,000 email addresses. So we, we went and reconfigured her online business with an e-commerce and began emailing to these customers. Yep. She, she, her profits exceed what she now does in the store. But the store is still a source of leads. So she still has the store, which does well, which just reopened, but the online marketing she does, and she's added product that isn't even covered in the store, has been a dynamic change and it's tremendous growth for her because it, they it were really able is. to reach the customer. It, you know, it's, it's really the, you know, it's the future. It's the next frontier. It's been the way, you know, with the rise of Amazon and all of the competing, you know, this issue of the last mile and how are we going to, you know, do this. And, you know, it's, it, it's coming, it's coming more and more, um, you know, the driverless cars and trucks excuse me, won't be here tomorrow, but they're going to be here one day. So this is going to do nothing but continue in this direction. Um, so for a lot of the small businesses, like, for example, our first couple of clients, when we looked at, say, okay, what options do we have in terms of what client information, what customer information do you have? None. 
you know, they've been, you know, some of these folks have been around for decades, but don't even don't have a list of cell phone numbers or email addresses. So we are starting really on square one with a lot of these folks saying with these couple of simple steps, you can grow, you know, you can grow your business, you can grow the awareness, how many people are seeing, you know, the visibility, how many people out there are seeing you, you know, in really such, you know, amazing ways. Um, but they are just, you know, it's either, sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a language barrier. Uh, sometimes it's a technology barrier. Um, you know, business owners, you know, in many industries will skew, you know, a little older. Um, so folks who might not be entirely comfortable, you know, with the technology, as I said, beyond, well, okay, I'm I can, older. I'm, I'm, I just use, began using Zoom uh, with the pandemic. I mean, I, and, you know, yeah, who knew what Zoom was back right. in February, back in February, <laughs> back in February. And now yeah. I'm doing podcasts and uh, <laughs> uh, I'm doing all kinds of things on Zoom. I'm keeping my business alive by uh, uh, meeting with people in Zoom. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been great for me. But I'll tell you, that's been one of the, um, that's been one of the sort of the interesting silver linings professionally has been the opportunity to spend the last few months um, networking and establishing relationships and connections with folks all over the country. Because our intention has always been to create a national brand out of this. And I know you hear that all the time, you know, you ever watch Shark Tank, everyone always wants to create a brand, right? You know, so, you know, I guess, suppose we're no different in that sense, <laughs> but in terms of this industry, now you have the big madman type agencies, the big Madison Avenue, you know, type places for the corporate big guys. That's another world. You have the do it yourself guys, you know, the square spaces, the WordPress, the GoDaddy's, that you see on TV all the time. But again, that's do it yourself. You know, so many small business people don't have the time, the patience, the comfort with the technology, you know, to do that. So they're just not, you know, they just a lot of times won't even, you know, won't even bother because they just don't, don't know how to do it, don't know an affordable way to enter this world because it starts, you know, with these $5,000 websites, you know, and um, maybe, you know what, maybe this is a good time to explain why we're able to do something for 500 and more that other places are doing for 5,000. I think it would be a great, great opportunity for you to explain that to the uh, listening public. Perfect. So the reason we're able to do that is because websites are essentially created one of two ways. Either each site is custom built, custom coded, meaning you build a, you do the software, you code the site from the ground up, or you use templates, which is what all of the, the do-it-yourselfers do. That's why you can do it yourself. So oh, pick this theme, this colors, kind of cut and paste right. and put it together, put it together yourself. That's templates. Those are the two ways. Now, the reason websites cost four or $5,000 or more is if they need to be custom coded. If you're going to build each one from the ground up. Now, what that does is that gives you a lot of flexibility if you need to integrate existing computer systems, if you need to integrate administrative, POS, multiple locations, social media accounts, all these different things. If you're really going to have some sophisticated art videos, if you're really going to have more sophisticated, you know, complex needs, well, then yes, you might need a site that's custom coded, which we, of course, can also do for a better price. But it's as if you're looking for a Honda Accord. I picture a, a teacher out there who needs a car to get her back home, from, back to and home, uh, to and from work. Needs a, a, looking for a Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, a, a Prius, something simple, reliable. You go to the car dealership, and all they have are 600 Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I can't afford that. I, I can't spend that money. I don't need all of that. Now, if money's no object, if you have the money, by all means, hop right into the Mercedes 600. I would. I, it's a beautiful car. Don't get me wrong. It, you I don't know, think I ever do all would, sorts of great story. stuff. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't need all of those bells and whistles, then you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars for nothing. And that's the 40% plus of small businesses that either don't have a website 
And that's just the ones that don't have a website at all. That's not counting the additional percentage that might have a website that's old, outdated, doesn't really work right, was never properly imbued with mm-hmm. SEO, um, hasn't really done it, you know, was never properly maintained. Um, so that's where, um, you know, that, 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 that huge crowd that really sort of needs these services, you know, it's more, it's, it's more businesses out there that, that need this than, like I said, I ever even imagined. Right. So what is your, what is your next step? Your, your next step, I guess, is trying to reach out to these small businesses across the country. And uh, yep, we're going to start. Yeah, exactly. I've been, uh, as I said, sort of building, building my own personal network, um, you know, making, uh, you know, making friends, connections. Um, not, uh, oftentimes, I always tell folks when we're networking that the ways in that people might be able to help each other are not always immediately obvious. It's not always a readily apparent synergy like, oh, you know, you need this, I have this, let's talk. You know, there are people that, you know, oh, I don't need this. And it's happened. They say, oh, yeah, I don't need that. But hey, I know somebody that's looking for somebody like you. Like, why don't you guys, you know, like, why don't you guys talk? Right. So being able to sort of lay that groundwork, uh, you know, sort of around the country, um, you know, across the country and also sort of here, uh, I've been getting much more involved sort of uh, locally, which is one of the things I was realizing. I spent so many months talking to folks all over the country and sometimes all over the world and realized that, boy, I haven't spoken to anybody here, lo- you know, <laughs> since we're still alive. I haven't spoken to anybody here locally in a while. So I've been reconnecting with the chambers, with local groups, getting the word out there, um, you know, sort of about what we do. So, uh, so that's really the next step um, is to sort of, uh, you know, emerge from our cocoon. We're in the middle of our of our official launch. Um, you know, sort of right now. So, kind of hitting the ground running and uh, getting you know, sort of getting everything going, letting folks know that we're out there, um, that we are able to do this completely virtually. Um, our uh, the way we onboard clients, they can submit uh, the documentation in terms of their, their information, um, payment, anything, uh, anything that a client needs. Um, you know, can be done virtually. So, um, so that's, uh, that's really the next step is hitting the ground running and uh, getting the word out there about who we are. And like I said, this is a, this is a problem that we want to solve sort of nationwide. And we know it's a problem that's, that's huge out there. And it's that simple. Yes. I need a website for my business. I don't want to spend five grand. I don't want to do it myself. What do I do? Who do I call? Well, finally, there exists so, there exists an Jorge, answer to that question, and it's Discover Me. So, Jorge, how can our listeners reach you that are interested in, in uh, uh, this inexpensive website, uh, the social media, and, and begin to get the services that they need? But, well, folks are welcome to check out our website anytime at discovermeweb.com. You can email me directly at any time, Jorge at discovermeweb.com. You can call our uh, Discover Me office line at 860-251-9206. Or you can even reach me directly on my personal cell. That's 860-655-0717. We have some uh, promotional materials. We have a brief informational, uh, digital informational pamphlet that explains some of the basics of who we are, uh, what we do, some of our basic uh, pricing options that can really answer a lot of the sort of basic uh, questions that uh, that folks may have. So I'm happy to send one of those out. Um, also, always happy to answer any and all questions that anyone might have. And if they're looking for other digital services as well, um, we don't just do websites. That's um, is where we saw the opportunity, where we really saw the need. But beyond that, you get, you know, other, the rest of the digital marketing world, the rest of the services that are, that are out there. But if a, you know, if a business is, doesn't even have their own website, well, they're really sort of starting from the ground up. So we're about getting them going and then seeing what other services can work for them. And if a business already has a website, but it just need, it needs some SEO, it needs a little punch up. It just needs a little review. We do complimentary website audits. We're more than happy to take a look at your site, uh, make some recommendations, provide some uh, some different 
uh, payment options for different lengths of time. So we really cater uh, everything we do to each individual client, whatever they need, however much or however little, uh, Discover Me is here to help. So you can check us out, uh, as I said, at our website online. You can email me, you can call our office or you can call me directly anytime. I am more than happy to answer any and all questions that anyone might well, have. Thank you very much for being on the show, on the podcast tonight. Uh, I enjoyed the conversation. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, your host. To reach me, you call 443-977-4500 or visit my website, alanhirschadvisors.com. You can listen to podcasts of past shows wherever you get your podcast. Uh, and you can follow me on LinkedIn as well. I'm Alan Hirsch, and this has been AHA Business Podcast.